I am. <laughs> All right. a long story um i think it first came out of a need to do this um i first started practicing in north carolina um and i worked for a physician who was extremely good um he hired me through the hospital they had an income guarantee out of residency and um in the midst of the year i thought everything was going well um at the end of the year when i was trying to renew my contract I found out that there was a lot going on behind the scenes that I did not know about. Um, unfortunately, he ended up being a drug addict alcoholic. Um, he left the practice, um, left me running the practice with the midwife, and he claimed he was going to be gone for three to six months. I stayed another six weeks, and I was 32 weeks pregnant with my first, my second child, and um, decided that I did not want to stay. So I stayed six weeks, and then. On a Wednesday, I called and said, Friday will be my last day. I quit. Um, so I did not have a job at that point, but I had saved some money. And if I could say nothing else, I always have an emergency fund. Start early, have emergency fund. Um, so I started to interview. We bought a house. Um, and I interviewed with a, a actually black female physician on the beach in South Carolina. Really nice practice, um, tons of business. But in the midst of me talking with her, she found out that she was being embezzled from <laughs> by her manager. And so I kind of decided, you know, we bought a house. I'm in this town. You know, if I fail, I fail. But, you know, let me go ahead and try. Everyone else seems to be able to accomplish this. And so I um, started a practice out of necessity. And um, I... There was a lady in town who kind of helped set up people's practices. That, that was one of her businesses. Wow. And so I um, talked to her and we uh, went from there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that does. I mean, where'd, you, where'd you meet this lady? She was in town. She um, she may have worked with another uh, practice, yeah. um, but she um, kind of walked me through the steps of uh, like, we had to sign up for the insurance companies. I had to get funding. Um, had to find employees uh it just it's a lot a lot involved and i think you're going to come to it in a little bit um how miraculous it was but basically i obtained a person <clears throat> um we set up a contract um there are a lot of things involved in the practice like i said you have to find employees you have to find a location you have to um <laughs> deal with all the regulations get your licenses your your business licenses your your, uh, you know, set up your phone and your your computer system, and you know, it's just a variety of things. But um, I think the biggest things are trying to get on with the insurance companies. You have to fill out paperwork to get on with them. Uh, set up your bank accounts. Set up your corporation. Um, I so mean, I don't even have an LLC, <laughs> and I know that's enough. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> yeah. People can be helpful though. Yeah. Money, money talks, and and they can. Help. So we work through it, and it and it's rough getting started. But you know, I think I like one of the terms that I've heard recently. People say, "Do it scared." Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're a little timid and fearful about it, but you know, I can say now that we survived it, and now we're in our 21st year. Even though I, I practiced there and then opened up here, but um, 21st year of private practice. Um. <laughs> There's pluses and minuses. I think I tell everyone they need to have a business. Um, certainly you have tax benefits from it. Um, but I think as a mommy, and I had little children at the time when I started, um, oh boy. Um, I was going to the banks to get loans with my son in the baby stroller. He would sit on the floor with me as I was talking to the bankers, trying to get a loan. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's yours. Um, it also allowed me to be a little more flexible with my schedule. Um, That's when my children were little, Right. It, it, when my children were little, um, I would juggle things around their schedule. So I, I set my office up a little later, especially as they grew. Um, I set it up so that I could get them to school. And um, I even in the in the buildings and the places where I was practicing, I set up 
bedrooms and in beds and things so if they were sick and i needed to work they could come here and lay in the bed and I, could, I could feed them and be and be with them um and i did that also for my staff so if they had little children um that you know i need you at work so bring your kids to, you know to the office and let them stay in the back we have food we have a kitchen a full bathroom um and that worked out through the years so i, I was able to accommodate them um and then, you know, if they had spring break, if they had, you know, I would just schedule it out and so that I could be with them. Um, so I think that was the big, a big portion of it. Um, so it's very miraculous how things worked out. And I've always tried to um, ask the Lord to direct my ways and to guide my path. And um, first, recently, I've actually been realizing how blessed I was to even get into the field because it has become, it was very competitive then. And I'm um, starting back from medical school. Um, I attended University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and it was very competitive to get in. And even that year when I matched in a position, you are not guaranteed to have a position. Um, and I'm finding out more and more that many people are not getting into the fields that they want to be in. Um, that year, there were 17 of us that applied for the for OBGYN positions around the country, and only 10 of us matched at that school, and I was one of the 10. Um, so I'm very big baller. I'm very blessed. The older I get, I've realized that people did not do what they wanted to do, and that would have been devastating to me. Um, so that was a blessing in itself to get in. Um, completed the program. Um, I started, as I mentioned. Um, joining a practice in North Carolina in a small a rural town um, and that kind of fell apart at the end um, and he would I forgot to mention earlier that he actually when I went to him about renewing our contract because I'm thinking everything was okay he says oh we're not gonna be able to afford to keep you <laughs> and I was like oh okay when were you gonna tell that when were you gonna tell me that <laughs> and so but we're not gonna just throw you out there you know and I said oh okay so the, like I said I, starting a practice was out of necessity I have to survive and eat. Um, so, um, so I started, like I said, I mentioned that I interviewed with people and I just said, I don't know if I'm going to like these people. It's really like a marriage. If you're joining someone, it's really like a marriage. Do, will I know, like these people? Will I, you know, so, um, amazingly there was a company that came to the town to start a new bank and they offered stock to all of the medical staff and I actually bought the minimum and so when I was decided that I was going to set up my own practice I um, went to all the seven banks in the town and I was turned down by six of the banks one of the banks uh, was trying to work with me and we were trying to get to what I thought I needed um, and then this other bank had come in town and so they approached me and said uh, let's have a meeting. The CEO came to my house and sat in the the uh, my uh, living room and said, "How much money do you need?" <laughs> and wait, and you need a building too. I was like, "Oh, okay." So I had scrambled with uh, to figure out some numbers with my sister because that's one thing they do not teach you in medical school is business. I had no business training. Um, fortunately, I have a sister that is amazing, and we scrambled and put together a business plan. Um, a very brief business plan and I told him what I needed and they gave it to me um, he also said oh you need a building too you need a place to stay so they literally funded partially funded me getting a office um, so that was just amazing the fact that I bought the, and these are the people I bought some stock and these are the people that gave me the money I needed to get started so um, we got started I practiced there for a total of five years and I decided the town was just really small. There was not a lot for the kids. Um, I just wanted to, to go. It, it was just very rural. And um, so I started to look at other places. I kind of looked at Nashville and Huntsville and I had coverage here. One of my classmates from college was here and the hospital here was um, giving income guarantees or money to help you get started because they were trying to recruit for their hospital and so I another miraculous thing um, I applied I didn't hear back from them um, I'm kind of a cold caller I will call people and see if they will help me out and I have no issue with calling people and I would try to do the same for other for people there was a physician here a black physician 
um, who was very prominent at the local hospital. And somehow I got his number and called him up. And he couldn't believe that they had not responded to me. I, to this day, do not what, know what he said to them, but he called. He said, oh, I'm going to make a few phone calls. He called them, and the next thing I know, they're blowing up my phone, and, oh, we have your information, and literally, I ended up coming here because of that, because I could not have come. I already had a loan for my first business, and I couldn't come and take any additional loans, um, and so they were going to assist, and we ended up working it out, so they came. Now, the other um, interesting thing that God worked out was I was very, I was furious for a couple of years because I still had huge bills in the former town and I was paying that, I was, I was paying it monthly. I had my mortgage, I had my loan payments and I think the people in the town thought I was gonna lose my building and I was refusing to do that. That wasn't gonna happen, but I had these huge bills there and I was trying to manage bills here. And um, I was pretty angry. I was like, Lord, why can this building not sell? Um, you know, why I, I've got all these bills, but he, helped me to get through it. The, the amazing thing was I, so it, it, it lasted for a couple of years and in the process I said I wanted to build something here. So my building sold in the absolute perfect time. A former physician that worked with us in the medical staff wanted to buy the building. I had dropped my realtor six months before so he got no commission. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, cause he, yeah, it, and so that cut out some of the money that I would've had to give out, give up. The, the physician offered to pay what I asked and because it was delayed, I was able to pay off all my loans. I, uh, it covered the, the mortgage, it covered the, the loan payment for the practice and it gave me additional money to set up here. So blessings, as, as angry as I was, he blessed me to, to be able to pay off everything. So the debt was taken care of in that town. Yeah. So I pray night and day for the my staff, my patients, um, labor, um, my family, you know, anyone, but definitely my patients. Because we're not God. We don't know, we don't know everything. We don't know what may happen. Um, patients have different medical problems there's some things that they don't even know about so I don't understand how people practice and don't pray I like them to know that they are good enough I would say pursue your dreams do something that you like but also consider what you may make <laughs> you want to live reasonably comfortably so um, you know choose a field that you enjoy but something that where you're not going to be you know, I would say struggling because, you, you know, life is uh, children, life, taking care of yourself is, is, is not cheap. And so, you know, in considering something that you like, try to choose something where you'll make some reasonable money. Please do not look at this social media. Um, do not believe the social media. I mean, people are showing you their best side. They're showing you perhaps things that are false. Um, and I know that uh, that's this generation. Everyone looks at social media and believes everything that's on there, but please do not believe that. And then just be happy with yourself. Be content with yourself. The Bible tells us to, to not envy, um, and, and take that to heart because, um, when you envy, then you, you, you just, you know, you, you, you kind of just lose it, yeah. <laughs> you know? So just be, choose a field, try to make something where you'll make some money. You are enough. Go to school if you can, and if you are not able to go to school, be self-taught. Teach yourself, read, there's tons of books um, in the library, things are free, things are cheap. Um, you have the internet at our fingertips. You have the internet at your fingertips. I mean, and people are making money off the internet, you're making blogs, you're, you're you know, make have a craft, people will buy almost anything. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, do some things. Um, and then, then take care of yourself, your mental health, because I think right now it's a really stressful time in this world's history. Um, always trust God. I, I like I used to like to say that he was the equalizer in, in professional life, in med school. Um, you may not have access to everything that um, some people have, but if you talk to the Lord, he can open up doors. Um, he can make a way. I have seen it in my life. Uh, there's so many things that I could tell you. Um, but he can just, just help you. And I even, even every day, that's one of my prayers is to, for help, help, protection, um, 
guidance, uh, wisdom and knowledge in dealing with all the things that we do every day. And he has all knowledge and wisdom. So tap into it. He said, just ask him and he'll give it to you.